said you're a listener and you had the guts to call the show. Stay on the line. We'll send you Government Zero uh, the minute it's it's uh, it's available. What? In, I, I'm going to keep doing this for a while. We're also going to do a little retro here on the Savage Nation. I have for you a very interesting piece of of sound for later. I don't know when we're going to get to it. It's a flashback audio from September 11th, 2001, w right after we were attacked by the Islamo fascists when they hit the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. And I want you to hear who Savage was then. If you think I've changed, I think you're going to have a different opinion after you hear me September 11th, 2001. This is the Savage Nation. Be here or be nowhere. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. That's our own American prophet, Bob Dylan, one of the greatest poets of, of all time, frankly, a great musician and a prophet. I don't know who wrote the lyrics. I think that's his song. But nevertheless, boy, was that prophetic. And so now we're dealing with a retrovirus in the White House. And I explain what a retrovirus is, but I didn't finish my discussion of this invader and what it does. And once it invades a healthy cell through a kind of enzyme that tricks the cell, an enzyme called reverse transcriptase, it starts to produce DNA from, from its own RNA, and it reverses the usual pattern of cell replication. And then the new DNA is incorporated into the host cell. And the host cell that, were, that has been invaded does not even know it's been invaded. And it starts to act like the, uh, like the invader. And here's the bad news about Obama and what he's done to this country and the world. It is very difficult to detect the virus until it has infected the host. But at that point, the infection will persist indefinitely. So many of you think that this can be reversed easily. But this infection that Obama has injected into the body politic may persist indefinitely, and you may have to learn to live with it. You may have to learn to live with an infected political system. He has destroyed it possibly forever. I know many of you think that you can turn it around. Good, keep thinking it and keep working for it. God bless you. But I know a little bit about immunology, and I know a little bit about politics, and when you combine my knowledge of immunology with politics, it's uh, prognosis pretty poor. Old Doc Savage says prognosis is pretty poor, and the evidence is, uh, is pretty clear. It's evidenced by the Boehner-McConnell infection. The, I mean, they've been infected, haven't they? Haven't most Republicans been infected by Obama's uh, retrovirus? Hasn't he infected them, injected them, with his political insanities. Now he wants to bring into this country at least 10,000, maybe 100,000 Muslims from Syria with no vetting. If this is not insanity and impeachable, tell me what is. Immediate impeachable. I don't want to hear about voting anymore. What does that mean? He knows how to manipulate the votes. But an impeachment hearing, although would not succeed, would expose the retrovirus for what he is. And it would stop the spread of the virus. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. The theme of the show is the 60s weren't all bad. Obama is like a retrovirus, and we need to impeach him immediately. Welcome to the program. Now, you may say, well, what is this guy, nuts? What do you mean impeachment? No one can beat this guy. I know that he can't be impeached, but I also know that impeachment hearings would expose the retrovirus for what he has done to the country, what he is doing to the country, and what damage he's likely, likely to do before he is finally out of office. That's if he ever leaves office. He is like a drunk tyrant out of control. And only a vigorous impeachment hearing, in my opinion, would expose to the world the damage he has done to the nation and the world. But I don't really want to talk about that. 
it's the end of the discussion, the impeachment, rather than the beginning and the germ of the discussion. The germ of the discussion is the 60s were not all bad. And I was using my personal life as an example. And I was talking about how I was reviewing uh, all my home movies from 1967 through 85, finally compiled on DVDs by a, a professional. It's taken years to do this. And I was watching only the first disc today, 30 minutes of it, going all the way back to my deceased father's store in New York City on Ludlow Street and me as a young guy and all of that stuff. And all of a sudden I transition the movie Jump Cuts, 1968, I'm in Hawaii. I'm working for one year for a National Science Foundation Fellowship for Science Teachers. I'm supposed to be there for a year, get a master's degree and go back and teach. And instead, my life took different turns for reasons that are uh, topics for another format, which would be a, uh, an autobiography rather than a radio show. But the movie ends, disc one, with me on the roof of a research hospital in Honolulu with the ocean way in the distance on the horizon. And I'm doing a free-spirited Tai Chi dance on the roof with my young wife and our friend Prasad, a Hindu, and he and I are arm in arm on the roof. And we're just free spirits on the roof of this building. I wish I knew where he was today, he explained. I sat on that roof with him many times in between lab sessions, and I asked him to explain to me what it is to be a Hindu. And he explained it to me. I, to this day, don't really understand it. But he pointed to the ocean and he said, you see how the waves keep coming in? Yes, constantly moving towards you, and they never end, they're eternal. That's how we look at life. I kind of got it, but I really didn't get it. All I know is that it was a beautiful time in my life, a kaleidoscopically beautiful time in my life. And it, it led me to the conclusion or the observation that the 60s weren't all bad. Many people evolved. Many, many people freed themselves up. Uh, the problem was is that they went in wrong directions or they got stuck like animals that fell into an amber pit. Many people in the media and in the movie business are very much like those animals. They fell into an amber pit politically and they never emerged, they never grew up. And the real problem is that a free spirit, I observe, is more easily penetrated or manipulated than a rigid spirit and enter the communists who were lurking in the background of the hippie movement, the anti-war movement. Enter the 1930s communists who were the godfathers of Barack Obama. The communists enter the spirits of the free spirits just as retroviruses infect humans, causing illnesses such as the common cold and AIDS. And then I say, unfortunately, I observe that this president of ours is like a retrovirus to America and the world. He has infected the body politic with his hateful anti-American views, and he has invaded many, many other people or cells with his destructive ideas. And I concluded with the sad observation is that if you study... If you study immunology, you find out that these retroviruses, once they're there, they're there. They're very hard to eliminate because you don't discover they're there until the animal is infected. And then they're almost impossible to, got, to get rid of. And so here we are, and I ask the question, which is, were you a hippie in the 60s or 70s? I think it went on through the 70s, I'm not sure. And did you become politically, let's say, to the right at some point in your life and what was it that that transitioned you what made you transit because to me this is interesting this is what makes for radio's beauty to me which is the ability to develop ideas experiment with ideas explore ideas listen to people open up on the show that to me is beautiful radio that's music so if you want to join that dialogue and add to the symphony that we're playing today on the show the, the phone number with one open line is 855-407-282 I guess it could be, are you a 60s hippie who's become conservative? When did it happen and why? Craig, WABC, what's your story? Go ahead, please. Yeah, hi, Michael. Um, yeah, that transition for me started in the late 60s. Uh, I came of age here in New Jersey, uh, 68, 69. I was 17 years old. And uh, I started to latch on to those ideals. You know, the, the older kids around me, the, they, they, they had the long hair. We, we wore the bell bottoms, you know. We, we started to identify with that free, you know, that questioning of authority, that freedom that, that was really in the air. That's what people wanted. And um, you ask the question, does that free spirit still exist? And, you know, for me, it does. I, I still feel like I question authority. I, I, I feel like that part of that time in my life 
is still very much alive. That that's what I that's how I yeah. But that's what mo that's what motivates me. I don't want any government telling me what I can think, what I'm not allowed to say. I'm still the very same person who doesn't want to be bossed around by a, a meddlesome government. I don't care who the organization is. They cannot tell me what to think or what to feel. I don't want them to tell me what I can read or can't read. So in that sense, what am I? Go go define that. Well, that's that's the question. Uh, if you're defined by their ideals, their regulations, their you know their their restrictions, um, you're not a you're not a true full person. You're you're cheating yourself and. You know, that yeah, but you know, let, let, let me. Yeah, but okay. So you were in that realm. You became basically something different politically, but you're still the same person. You're still basically a freedom-loving individual who will fight for your right to be free. Isn't that what you're saying? That is correct. And you know that transition, that that change from that free-spirited attitude that I took out of those. I'm going to say four or five years: sixty-nine, seventy, seventy-one, seventy-two. The last, when I voted for George McGovern in 72, that was it. That was the end of that free spirit. That was the end of that 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 liberal ideology that I, I think that I was developing. Oh, so you do go back, you do go back to the 60s if you're bringing up McGovern. I, I do, Michael, yes. I'm, I'm 63 now th this month, and, and that's a time that it was a wonderful time in our lives. It was a great time to, you know, to, to, to be involved in everything that was going on, but... I started to see that my family, uh, my, my ancestors, my grandmother and grandfather came here from Holland. They came here in the 30s. And they started a bakery, and they worked hard. And I had, um, between, between aunts and uncles, there were 10 children. And they all worked very hard. And, um, you know, that started to enter into my consciousness. Now, look, I have a wonderful family. They're all very close. They had their Sunday dinners together. They had family gatherings. And when I started to recognize that, you know, they're hardworking people, this is what I needed to do. And, you know, like one of your early, earlier call, callers mentioned, um, you know, it came time to pay the bills. And then when I started to really work, it, I had to go to work and earn my money and, you know, go to college at the same time in between. Uh, All right, so you became a fiscal conservative, which changed you politically. So let's cut to the chase. What do you think of Barack Obama? Is he a liberal? I don't know what he is. I, I don't know. I, I I identify with all, with with. Well, what I can say is, up until he was elected, you know, there was a feeling in the country that, okay, another president has just come in. The four years are up. We got a new president. I never had a sense that things were spinning out of control. That the country was in danger. That there was, you know, a nut. Well, a nut taking over. That's what I. That's what I f felt like in '08. Ever since he's been in office for these last six, seven years, That's I believe I believe he, I believe he's a psychotic, and I believe he shows evidence of his psychosis on a daily basis. Granting, not only granting, but going around the will of the people, the will of Congress, and using every trick in the book to manipulate Congress into granting uh, the most terroristic nation on earth the right to develop to, to build a nuclear weapon. Number one, and the next day telling us he's going to bring in 10,000 to 100,000 Muslim refugees from Syria, he will not stop. I'm telling you, this is the mark of a psychotic individual. I think he's crazy. Well, we're, we're in difficult times, and, um, you know, I, that, that, that. Why are people afraid to question the sanity of a president? Why are people afraid to question the sanity of a president? Tell me why. What are they above above the human uh, human condition? Remember that famous movie? Uh, I forget the, the K Mutiny Court Martial, played so aptly by uh, Humphrey Bogart, where he was the captain of a of a naval ship in World War II that gets caught in a storm, and he loses his nerve, and the ship almost goes down, and the the uh, the, the other officers have to save the ship, and there's a court martial. This happens in combat. It happens in politics, it happens in medicine, it happens in talk radio, people crack up. And you know, it's not always as apparent as running through the halls uh, naked. Sometimes you go crazy and people don't even see the change. But you know, when you have a president doing things that are overtly insane uh, with regard to national security, what more needs to happen? Tell me. That's all, one, just, that's all where we're going. So we'll go back to the hippie theme Let's play a little more music on that theme and ask people to, to share with us their, uh, their old uh, viewpoints, if you have home movies. 
It's an amazing thing to watch. I got to tell you, 